Good morning, it's Dr. James. Hey, I hope you're off to an awesome start this morning. It's so good to see you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your energy. And today, right from the onset, I wanna ask you a question. How are you doing with what's going on around you today? Particularly in the area of politics, particularly here in the United States. How are you doing with that? Do you ever find yourself, uh, I'm really honest, I find myself sometimes going, I, I think I wanna watch the news for the first time in 30 years. I gave up the news 30 years ago this year. And because I know there's a lot of stuff that um, is somewhat fascinating in a really weird sort of way and somewhat uh, uh, something I want to watch because, uh, I don't know, it, 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 it satisfies an emotional something inside of me that I'm, I'm frankly kind of embarrassed about that I actually would want to even go back and watch the news. But I haven't. I'm not going to go back and watch the news after 30 years. Uh, I'm reading about what's going on and that's, and that's scaring me enough and that's making me feel sad enough and that's making me feel anxious enough. So I, I don't have the wherewithal to watch um, the evening news, the morning news and allow those 30 and 60 second uh, sound bites fire hosing my emotions and fire hosing my heart and my mind. I can't handle that so I don't do that. That's why I gave it up three decades ago. And there's another part of me that thinks, well, you know what? Why don't I just get away from all of it, not pay attention to any of it, and just go about leading my life in a way that makes me happy? And that doesn't make me happy either. Uh, that's because I'm an activist at heart. I want to be an activist. I, I want to raise the consciousness. I want to raise the light. I want to raise the love. I mean, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, boom, there's the light and there's the love. I, I want to be a part of that movement. So today I want to share with you something. If that, if that resonates with you and you find yourself, I can't watch the news anymore and I can't complain about it anymore and I, I don't want to get away from it and just say, oh my gosh, I don't even want to know about it. I want to be somewhere in between. I want to be the love in between. I want to be the, I want to be the opportunity to create a movement through my experience of what I realize more and more science is telling us. If we want to galvanize a movement, if we want to make change happen, if we want to be a catalyst for something better than what we're sensing and seeing around us, I love to say that the world doesn't want to hear the sermon. The world wants to see the sermon. It doesn't want to hear about it. It wants to see it. That's integrity. That's courage. That's spiritual warriorhood. That is, that is beauty and brilliance unleashed. And um, I'm going to share with you five principles that actually are shown to be the greatest catalyst for movements. And what is that? It's hope. Project Hope is what we're going to talk about today. And uh, the, the, the Pew Charitable Trust did an amazing study, about 10, 10 years of research, trying to figure out what was the thing that absolutely got people to engage with others more than anything else, to follow something, to, to feel like they're part of something, to rise up together and be in a space where they say, I want to be an activist for something greater than me. Well, guess what it is? It's hope. And there are five things that you and I can do today to be part of the project of hope and, and lead the hope and overcome whatever this is going, whatever this thing is that we, I don't want to call it, a, it's not left or right, it's just wrong. It's just wrong. And um, so here we go. Here's Project Hope. Number one, uh, here's what science tells us we can do to build hope. We have to give ourselves time out to be thoughtful, to, to, to build a, an understanding of what it is that we're feeling. If we're running all the time and we're gonna become too tired, to, we're gonna come, become too tired to keep running and we'll be too scared to stop and nothing good happens under the influence of that physiologically, emotionally, or spiritually. So meditation is hugely important. Mindfulness practices, being present, single tasking, all those things cultivate hope within ourselves, which tends to bring a presence and a hopefulness outside of us with other people. People. Number two, we have to be expressors of love. Um, studies show that the more that we are more public with our kindness, the more that we're more open with being heart-centered and, and out of our judgment and out of our, um, our smallness and out of our dimming of the light and bringing the light forward. I, sorry, <laughs> I can't help myself. It just is so perfect when the sun comes up in the morning. And number three, understand when you say this phrase, I am a catalyst for... I am a catalyst for. When you say that, you literally start to engage hopefulness physiologically. You engage hopefulness neurologically. Your neurochemicals start to build a fortified understanding of what it is that you came here to be. Here's what you came here to be. You came here to be a catalyst for good. You came here to be a catalyst for hope and love. And we have to be the visual sermon of that and wake up the world from a self-imposed lumber. Let the world see the possibility of hope so they too say, I want what she's having. I want what he's having. I'm following that hope. 
Number four, be an intentional kindness pollinator. That simply means that when you go and pollinate someone else with your kindness, literally encourage them to use that experience to pay it forward. Studies show that the contagious nature of kindness is so powerful when we instigate and initiate it, and we do it in such a way that that person absolutely experiences it through what we did and how it absolutely makes them feel what we did is what they get to continue to do too. This is a beautiful opportunity. And I think number five, it's about making new media. Your life could be an epic motion picture of possibility and hope. And it's up to you to be courageous enough through these experiences to go out there and show the world what possibility and hope looks like when it's unleashed. Let's be activists for not judging, not being left, not being right, but not allowing us to go away from or get caught up in the wrong. Let's be about being the change that Gandhi said we want to be in the world and going out there and broadcasting that hopefulness with abandon, with a type of courage and conviction that literally wakes up the world from that slumber party. And that slumber party is over. It's time for us to rise and to shine and to create a love and a life of love that absolutely changes the world around us. It's time, guys. Okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. Much love and many blessings. Bye-bye.